Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. So for the next few weeks, we have no flowers dedicated to the altar. So if anybody would like to do that, please see me at coffee hour. Thank you. On Saturday, April 20th, the Women's League is having their indoor flea market with new items galore, and they need help on Friday to set up at 10 a.m. If anyone can join in, that would be wonderful. And the Freeport Food Pantry has now closed, but we will continue to collect items of non-perishable food for the people that they will distribute it to those in need. Today is a communion Sunday, and in accordance with the free gift of God's love and grace offered to all people in Jesus Christ, ours is an open table, and all are invited and encouraged to participate in the sacrament of communion. We use grape juice instead of wine so that there, is no barrier, there are no barriers to anyone. Thank you. Oh, and one more announcement. Oh, and not an announcement. We had a lot of activity. We had a lot of activity at the Parsonage this weekend and in um, the conference room. John donated eight chairs so mm. that when we have meetings, we could be comfortable. And they're the type of chairs that won't shred. So when you sit down, you don't get up and walk out with a million pieces of plastic all over you. So thank you, John, for doing that. We also had a lot of people helping. Uh, the Donovans came in and helped with the, the, the thrift store and a lot of people helping with the basement in the parsonage. Um, John Paul and his friends came over and cleaned out the basement, which was awesome. Now we don't have to worry about that anymore. And it's just a big thank you to everybody that came down and helped. You noticed the pile of stuff in front of the dumpster. We're getting close to the end of those piles, so it's awesome. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Please join me in a moment of silent prayer in preparation for worship. Amen. Once again, greetings to each and every one here, and welcome to those. Um, it's a blessing once again to be here with the Bethany Congregational Church. Uh, this has been an interesting week leading up to Jay. Um, I was going to say it later on in my was that words of message to you this morning, but <laughs> resurrection is an earthquake. Hmm. Right? Uh, 
We've, um, it's good to know that and good to see everyone's faces here and see that everybody is well. And I hope that your loved ones in other states or that have basically experienced it are doing well as well. Oh, scripture for this morning that has been on my heart once again is that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mind, my heart, and I hope in your hearts as well. Let us continue to center ourselves on the memory of what took place last week, but then also knowing that resurrection lives within each and every one of us. Let us prepare our hearts and our mind as we continue to go into worship this morning, as we now stand to our feet if we're able to and lift up the songs. The song, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, which is hymn number 252, amen? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we must see something before we believe. Very well done. Okay. Don't we? It was like that for some people in the Bible, too. On the evening of the first Sunday after Jesus was crucified, his disciples were together in a locked room. They were afraid of those who crucified Jesus. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the locked room with the disciples. It was hard to believe. But 
They saw him, and Jesus showed him his wounds in his hands and in his side, so they knew it was truly him. One of the disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus appeared to them. When the disciples told Thomas, he didn't believe. He had seen Jesus crucified and buried. How could, how could he be alive? Thomas said, unless I see the wound in his side and put my finger in the holes where the nails were in his hands, I will not believe. <laughs> A week later, the disciples were again in the locked room, and this time Thomas was with them. Again, Jesus appeared and stood among the disciples. Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put them in my side. Stop doubting me and believe. <laughs> Thomas fell on his knees and answered Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You and I have never seen Jesus with our own eyes. The question is, will we be one of those who is blessed because we believe, even though we have not seen him? You don't have to do that anymore. Thank you. Well done. Now, a short <laughs> prayer. Dear God, help us to believe in our heart the truths we find in your holy word, even though we have not seen them with our own eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and help yourself to Thank you. <laughs> Let us pray. Yes, Lord. Resurrected Christ. You have taught us how the unbelievable can be possible. When there is so much to fear in the world, we can find peace in your presence. As we worship, breathe your spirit on us that we may carry it with us. Help us comfort our neighbors. Help us serve a world of need. We pray this with thanksgiving for your work among us. Amen. 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 Please join me. In the responsive reading, it's uh, in, in the hymnal found on page 712, it's Psalm 133. At the top of the page. Here we go. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred, when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down, down upon the beard, upon the head of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there God ordained the blessing, the blessing of life forevermore.
Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. The believers share their possessions. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and bought the, proce brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Amen. Our epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 2. The word of life. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. God is light. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us all from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Christ our advocate. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. And now we prepare our hearts and our minds for hearing the Gospel of John. And I'll be reading John 20, verses 19 to 31. And it reads, When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced, they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, and they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. 
Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray once again. Eternal Father God, <clears throat> I come to you this morning just to say thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for this day and this time. Oh, Lord God, I ask that you take this vessel of clay that you have fashioned and formed and that you speak through it, that you move all things that are coming within it at this present time <clears throat> that are not of you so that a word could be held and heard from your people. It is in your holy name that I pray and say amen. <clears throat> Hmm. In your bulletins this morning, it says the title of the sermon is The Gospel of Locked Doors. Hmm. Some would think that would be a strange title, but the gospel, we all know, is another word for meaning good news. So for a few moments this morning, if I have your attention, I want to speak to the subject of the good news of locked doors. And once again, the scripture says, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. We all have heard the saying once or twice or somewhere, if God closes a door, he will open a window. Or if God closes one door, he'll open another. These phrases are not biblical. They are, in fact, part of a movie um, called The Sound of Music. But there are quite a few verses about locked doors that can be found in the Bible. It's been one week now since what, Easter, one week since the chaos and excitement, one week since the empty tomb, and one week since our first hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord, yes, is risen indeed. And it's one week after resurrection and the disciples are in the same place they were Easter night. They were in the same room behind the same locked doors. And considering the scene, I had to wonder about the details of those locked doors. I have was it also had to wonder about the stories of Christ's resurrection and in many other places in the Bible are filled again with locked doors. It is a common phrase in the resurrection narratives that doors being locked for the fears of Jews. The disciples had what lost their leader and teacher, and they feared that they themselves would become victims. They feared that they also would be victimized. They saw what happened. We all, we heard of what happened. They feared and they basically wanted to flee. It also led some of them to what, do things that we did not expect them to do. We, but then we read always, and we read again in the text, that Peter denied that he even knew Christ. It led them all to hide behind locked doors. Hmm. I have to say that locked doors do have blessings. Uh, closed doors in the Bible can have many meanings, including what? Sometimes for some, it might be shame or hiding. But that is not always the case. Uh, so the resurrection was a big deal. It was a changing, a life event, yet they were still behind locked doors in the same place where they were. What difference, I wonder, was the tomb for them and how had it changed for them? And how basically made it, was it the story that we heard once again? I wonder, after this week, after Easter for us, what has resurrection or what has Christ's resurrection done for us? Is your life different? Are you engaging or seeing things in the world in a new way? When I look at my life, it looks hmm, a little like it did last Sunday. 
the week before, and the week before that. But at the same time, I look and know that there has been some changes going on when I sat and basically went into discernment. But in hearing today's gospel in John 20th, 19 to 31, it was a critical of the disciples. They are still stuck in the same place. They should have done better than that. After all, death has been defeated. Christ is risen. But why were their lives different? And also, when you look at your own lives, have our own lives changed since this story has been retold again? Hmm. Locked doors. Each and every one of us has to experience in our own life some form of disappointment in our life. We feel that we are what? Doing what God is calling us to do, and all of a sudden, boom, something is snatched away, or we hit rock bottoms along the way. And these are many reasons that there, these things happen. However, after listening and discerning and going through and looking again at this resurrection story, at this gospel once again, and I started looking at it differently. Here's what I think today's gospel is telling us, that there is indeed good news behind locked doors. Resurrection, as I said early, is a quake. God did say that he was going to come back in, was it, in a quake in some type of way. And all of a sudden, was it last week, we had this quake, and everyone basically was running around in different locations. People were running out of buildings. People were going up underneath chairs or desks, trying to figure out what was going on. And people were coming and asking those of us who were spiritual leaders, what is happening? This is a quake. This is an earthquake. We have not had any of these in quite some times. Uh, what should we do? How should we was it, um, hold on to ourselves? What, should we, what happens? Um, what should be, what are we should be learning from this? Hmm? There might be a story in it, I don't know, but we know that we had one and that we are all okay. But there is good news behind locked doors. Uh, the tomb, yes, is empty, but that was a changing event for the disciples. And that resurrection also gives us a new starting point each and every one of the disciples in that room had a new starting point. Yes, they did see the Savior die, but yes, he basically came and presented himself to them, and he said, peace be with you. We all also here today, we also have a new starting point in this 2024 resurrection story. The resurrection gives us a new starting point to deal with some of the locked doors that we have in our lives. Hmm. Locked doors, beloved, are our blessings. Not everyone sees a locked door as blessings, but locked doors are a blessing. Not every door is meant to be open, and God has a way of redirecting, refocusing, and repotting all of us in the mission that he has prepared for us. Locked doors can be, was it, tremendous for some people. But God was it, has good news for us behind these locked doors. Resurrection is a story. And as this story continues to unfold for each and every one of us, each and every day, we are resurrected in some type of way. It's a movie, if you will, a snapshot of what, what Christ has to do for our lives. The fact that the empty tomb is not the story of the resurrection, the facts of Jesus' life are really not the story of the resurrection, but what is our life doing at? What is the starting point? What is the starting point? point of our resurrection story that we're doing for him because what we are his hands and his feet his body while we are here on this earth hmm. so if you're dealing with in your locked door situations was it sorrows or lonely or a disappointment know that not to stay there in fear because what if we look at scripture we're told that we're not supposed to have a spirit of fear but it was of power and of sound mind Jesus has basically spoken a word of peace to each and every one of us. So if you feel that, yes, your life has not changed that much and you're still dealing with some of the same problems that you were dealing with prior to Easter, after Easter, after resurrection, uh, prior to Good Friday, or was it ever since last year, it is okay. Those situations are still blessings that God has given us in different type of ways. Our locked door situations, our doors of not... But for some, yes, maybe stories of disappointment, something of being overwhelmed, but every locked opportunity, we're not there alone. In that locked house, God is there with us. 
So if you are locked in a house of fear, a confusion of darkness, yes, that may be your standing point, but also you have to remember that Jesus is also in that place with you. The great tragedy here is not that the disciples are in the same house behind the same locked doors. That's just their what starting point. And we also, too, have a starting point as we move forward each day from hearing, once again, the resurrection story, repeating it, living it uh, in our hearts and our minds. Where are we moving forward in what God has called us to do? So what, again, are the doors that are locked in your life? What are the things that are holding you or keeping you stuck in the same place? That's a starting place. Don't judge it as good or bad or wrong. It's just where you're at and where we all are at in our different journeys in life. The good news to note is that in the midst of it, Jesus will step in. In both of the stories where we see that Jesus basically appeared, it doesn't tell us how he got there, whether he just faded through the door, but he, what, he appears. Jesus steps in the midst of each and every one of our houses, each and every one of our temples through locked doors, and he breathes the peace and life into us. He breathes upon us. He breathes peace and hope into us. He breathes peace and courage into us. He breathes peace and strengthens us. And that breath of peace is the key that unlocks the door. So for a few moments, I just want you to just center yourself, if you will. If you won't mind just closing your eyes. I'm not going to um, do a magic trick, but I just want you to just center yourselves for a few moments and close your eyes. And take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and take it all in. Let it fill and enliven you. Let it give you the hope, the courage, and strength to unlock and open the doors of your life and then get you moving into that mission that God has called you for. You may release that breath. The good news is that Jesus is there behind those locked doors, those locked thoughts. And also, another thing, not because he just steps in, the second point that I want you to remember this morning is that Jesus gives us peace. Notice Jesus' first words to them is, peace be with you. This is important because he repeats it again. In verse 21 and verse 26, Jesus does what he does always, and he does to us today. He begins by giving his peace. Normally, the saying wouldn't mean much. It's just a typical what Jewish greeting that still was ready today. We wouldn't say, peace be with you. But in this context, it means much, much more. We've already seen that the disciples felt afraid. They were confused and afraid of the people who killed Jesus. It seems that Jesus was doing far more than simply greeting them. Before he had died, he had promised his followers peace. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, I give to you, so not let your hearts be troubled. God also is giving us that peace. Yes, there may be some situations that you're dealing with in your life right now, in your communities, in your homes, or you may know of someone that's dealing with some situation in their life that, that seems like a locked door. But we as disciples, we as those on a mission for Christ, we have to remember that that peace is there and peace is still with us. The peace between us and Jesus is still there. He's standing there among them, offering them himself as a friend and a helper, and he's still there today. Peace between us and God is still there. Peace between us and others who are in Christ is there. And peace in our own souls is there. The fact that we no longer have to live with what guilty conscience is because whatever we may have done any misdoings, we know that he what, constantly forgives us over and over again. The hope of peace in the whole world, that one day his peace will what? Rule the whole world. Peace is there, he says. Peace he gives us. So there is good news behind locked doors. Every situation that you may be going through, God's peace is there. It's important that we also remember that 
Jesus gave us a mission. If we read verse 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. What Jesus is saying here is remarkable. Jesus came to this world with a mission. He came because his Father sent him to come. It is a mission that began in the heart, the very heart of God. God was the what? Very first missionary. God is on a mission to set the world right, to redeem this broken and sinful world to what he intended to be. Jesus came as part of that mission, and also we now that we know the story, we also are part of that mission. Those of us who are continuing in our walk with him, those that know that he's using us to do great and wonderful things, using our hands and our feet to help those in our community. But Jesus also turns to his disciples and says, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. So just as the Father sent Jesus, now Jesus sends us to live on a mission in the world, to enter the world as Jesus did. And if, yes, I have come to learn that Bethany is doing what God has called you all to do in this world, and that is good. And in case you're wondering what that looks like, you have to remember that we have to continue what, forgiving people and forgiving ourselves. We have to what, represent him when we're out in the community, help people know that God is still there and Jesus is still there and what that means, what it means to be part of the church, how to represent Jesus in the world, offering ourselves, helping people as much as we can. The heart of Jesus what, is to give peace and it's also to send you on a mission. I ask that you continue to read through the resurrection stories, read through the scriptures that speak to you, that call you to really look at what is holding you back. Now remember, the disciples did not stay there. They eventually did leave because they were able to tell Thomas about seeing. We cannot stay locked behind closed doors. Yes, doors will be locked, but in the midst of it, God is there with us to help us move forward in the work that he's calling us to do. The message of John 20 is that Jesus has risen and he's given us what we need the most. The risen Jesus has a heart to give us peace, a mission, and his spirit. And yes, that peace, that heart, a mission, and his spirit came behind locked doors. And yes, sometimes our minds may be like Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas, he was, his mind was locked, but yet when he saw him for himself, his mind had opened up and he moved forward in doing what he needed to do. So today, receive his peace behind locked doors. If you haven't already done so, trust in the one whose heart has been shown to you to be so beautiful in these beautiful chapters of John the one who died as a servant king to accomplish everything that needed to be done. And then receive his peace. Live on a mission. Yes, life is still giving us ups and downs and troubles and trials and tribulations, but in the midst of it all, we are supposed to hold on to that peace and live on that mission and live in the spirit of God's power, God's glory for our joy and for the good of the world. So we thank you, Father Jesus, that you have risen. We thank you that the risen Jesus has a heart to give us a peace, to give us a mission, and to empower us with his spirit. We worship him today and every day. So continue to remember there is good news behind locked doors. Because in the midst of every locked situation, whether it's good or bad, Jesus' peace is there with us. This is the blessed word for this morning. Amen. Let us stand to our feet if we're able. I believe we have the affirmation of faith that we'll do this time. And it is find, founded on, what is it? Page 886 in the hymnal. In number 886. Yeah, number 886. Oh, the number is 886, so sorry. All the way back. All in the back. Let's see if I can find it.
Ready? You, O God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your, your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. At this time, I invite you, um, you may be seated. Uh, we are going to do hymn number 292. Are there any joys and concerns? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> any joyous concerns? Okay. My uh, grandson's girlfriend, Chelsea, needs prayers. Uh, I'd like prayers for uh, Denise, Kathy, Bob, um, my daughter, Nancy, and Scott. While you're roaming around out there, could we uh, pray for Ethel Galoon? She's been out ill. You know she hasn't been with us for a little bit there. She has a, a terrible cold from what I hear, so she could use prayers, and maybe even a phone call would be nice. And we saw Barbara Goodspeed last week in the parking lot, and she looked great. It was so good to see her. So joy, that's a true joy. Barbara is not feeling, she's feeling better because she came in to say hello to us at the 15th yesterday. So she's coming along nicely. Thank you. Oh. 
our prayers for Jen Lantini, who's waiting for us at the bridge. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your prayer, sweetheart. Did, I didn't hear, did any, do you know what? I'm sorry, but we want to know. Um, <clears throat> my daughter is asking for prayers for our dear friend, family friend, Jen Lentini, who is uh, waiting for a second heart transplant. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you. I'm asking prayers for um, my daughter's father-in-law, Dick Webb, who will be undergoing surgery later this month. Prayers for healing. And I have uh, joys and concern from Joliansky. I join her in saying what a beautiful Easter service we had last week. Um, she enjoyed it via YouTube. And also, she's asking prayers for her friend Regina, who's home from the hospital, and prayers for Kathy's mother-in-law, Anita, who's going through a rough, rough patch, and baby Aisha and family, too, as well as others. Thank you. Barbara, did you have to say that? I'm just going to get to the mic. So Barbara Valdez just asked for prayers for her goddaughter who's going through a bone marrow transplant. So prayers there too, please. Let us join in together and say in the Lord's Prayer as we keep these prayers that have been lifted up amongst our beloved and our friends and our family together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now confess our sins to God together. Please join me in the prayer of confession in your bulletin. Sovereign God, we confess that we have not turned away from sin. You call us to study the scriptures, but we are easily distracted. You ask us to be persistent in prayer, but we are quickly discouraged. Forgive us, God of grace. Write your word in our hearts so that we may truly know you and joyfully serve you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved, know that Christ has already pardoned you of your misdoings. He reminds us once again, peace be with you.
things come of you, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, God, I ask you to bless these gifts, bless all who were able to give and those who had a thought to give. Continue to build upon what has been received on this day and the days to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Peace. 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 Peace, 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 peace to you, <laughs> peace, 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 I come up with a peace song, peace I give you, peace. Let us um, prepare our hearts and mind for um, our communion. We'll do now hymn number 330. Let us break bread together. We celebrate you today, Jesus, because you have made it clear that death does not have the last word, because you have filled us again with hope and faith, because you have given us a vision of new possibilities, new realities, and new ways of being. Open our minds to believe what we cannot explain. Open our hearts to hope for what we cannot see. Open our lives to live and to love in the midst of death and despair. Let resurrection happen again in us today. In company with all believers in every time and beyond time, we come to this table to know you, Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Lord. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Holy Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is praised among all peoples. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with your people on earth and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, almighty one. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Spirit. We created all things, blessed them, and called them good. You call to yourself a people to make your mercy and truth known in the world. We betrayed your calling. You were faithful. We wandered from the way. 
you called us to return and led us home. And still we turned from your ways, abused your, creature, your creatures, and made ourselves slaves to sin and death. At the right time, you came and dwelt among us as one of us, bringing good news to the poor, healing the sick, raising the dead, sharing table with the unrighteous, and teaching the way that leads to life. At supper before he died, Jesus took bread and he blessed it. Then he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, this is my body broken so that you may know life. Eat and remember me. And after the meal, Jesus took the cup Jesus took the cup and blessed it. Then he gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my blood shed, that you may know life, drink, and remember me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So now, Lord of life, we share in this meal, we celebrate together, and we remember you. And we will continue to do this until resurrection has flooded the whole creation. May this bread and this wine, thank you. May this bread and this wine become for us your living, giving body and blood. And may we who share this meal be joined with you and with one another as one body united in resurrection life and sharing with all creation in your eternal salvation, the gifts of God for the people of God. body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Take an eat.
And now the life-giving body and blood, may we share this meal together, the body of Christ. Let us pray. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less in Jesus' blood and righteousness. Let us sing hymn number 403. <laughs> able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory majesty and power and authority before all time now and forevermore God loves you he really really does blessings and amen
just looking for the wine in the cup. Yes. But yeah. yeah.